Hello, my name is Regina M. Dick with Good News Broadcasting and Multimedia. You can find us at gnbm.org. We are an online Christian organization created to spread the good news gospel of Jesus Christ around the world via modern multimedia technology. Good News Broadcasting and Multimedia sponsors Prayer Warriors 365. Prayer Warriors 365 is an online project to bring prayer warriors together. An effective prayer warrior is one who, through their personal walk with Jesus Christ, find truth and freedom and the fullness of salvation. This one day at a time, 365 days a year journey through the power of the Holy Spirit produces a completeness in Christ, putting on the whole armor of God. This completeness produces powerful and effective intercessory prayer, bringing a victory in every area of life. Prayer Warriors 365 is created to encourage, support, and unite Christians in the good fight of faith in Jesus Christ as we join together in prayer, creating a tidal wave ripple effect, impacting personal lives, families, communities, nations, and the world, bringing unity and purpose for God's kingdom. Live programming episodes can be found at blogtalkradio.com forward slash prayer warriors 365. Online video is created for YouTube. You can find us at youtube.com forward slash prayer warriors 365 or youtube.com forward slash gnbmorg. Support us by going to YouTube and subscribing to either channel, GNBMORG or Prayer Warriors 365. This is the way we support this ministry. This is the way we get the word, the good news, out. The warrior graphics are created by Bill Osborne, and we want to thank him. You can find him at art.billosborne.com. Today is Day 17. Telling Yourself the Truth. We'll begin by asking the question, why is telling yourself the truth so very important? And especially in these current times. This is something that most people don't want to go to. None of us really, at any point in our beginning walk with the Lord, want to go to this place, but it is vital. It is the very reason that we're here, and it is the very reason that we'll build upon that relationship with Jesus Christ. So let's begin the why. The why has eight keys. The very first one opens the line of communication with God bringing God into perfect priority in our life. So that's why we want to be able to tell the truth. That's why we want to be able to get to that place of telling ourselves the truth. We learn to release control to the one who is ultimately in control. We learn to be in his presence in the present. So telling yourself the truth opens the door to the line of communication with God, the very first key. Number two, the next key, and this is extremely important, opens the door to developing a personal, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. In order to communicate with God, we must go through Jesus Christ. So getting to that place where we're willing to choose to tell ourselves the truth to get to a place of honesty requires beginning in that relationship with the Lord intimately. We are not able to be truly intimate, meaning honest, with ourselves until we are intimate, again, meaning honest, with Christ. Why? Because He knows us better than we know ourselves. Through the power of His Holy Spirit, each and every step, 
he teaches us along the way. He gives us the tools. He gives us the resources. He gives us the gifts and the armor to overcome every area and find victory out of bondage, out of deception. This relationship creates a trust in him as we experience miraculous healing, moving us from trying to believe on the outside to knowing without a shadow of a doubt on the inside. See where intimacy is the most important thing that we can do in our relationship with the Lord. He will help us overcome the things in our personal life. Why are we this way? Why are we doing these things? Opening this door to the personal relationship with Jesus Christ also changes our perspective and our focus. Once we get to that place of knowing Him and believing in Him without a shadow of doubt, because it's on the inside, our minds are renewed. We begin to see things through His perspective and we learn to stay focused on Him no matter what might come. So this is the beginning and this is why it's the most important thing that we can do is get to that place of telling ourselves the truth. We walk in the fullness or completeness of salvation. In other words, we took that step of choosing to believe in Jesus Christ. But there's a fullness. We receive salvation. There's a fullness. There's a completeness. It's a journey that we take with Him. Third key opens the door to freedom from any holes on our life. Things that we don't even realize, which basically have become our idols, our hold, our bondage. We get freedom from continued deception. We get freedom from fear. We get freedom from character defects getting to that place of honesty and telling ourselves the truth. We find freedom from double-mindedness, meaning swaying back and forth from being in the world into trusting God, telling one person one thing, telling another person something else. We find freedom from the bondage of sin and death. We don't even realize the bondage that we have on us until we experience that freedom and the yoke comes off. We are release the hold of man's perfection for God's perfection. In other words, we no longer have to be perfect from a man's point of view, but to receive God's perfection and what he does in us. Number four, the fourth key, opens the door to becoming more than conquerors. We're able to face not only our own Goliaths in our personal lives, things from our past, but any that might come across our path in the future. Taking back what has been stolen we get recompense and restoration by telling ourselves the truth through Christ. Because here's the key. Once we begin on this journey with the Lord, these things are going to be extremely difficult to do. We cannot do them on our own. We don't have the tools. We don't understand. We don't know. But we're saying, Lord, we trust you. We're walking in faith to walk through these landmines of our life from the past as we learn to find freedom from these holes, these bondages, we're getting restoration, we're getting healing, and we're getting recompense, double, triple, thousandfold for our trouble, more than we can imagine. We can truly help and encourage others on their journey with Jesus. Because once we've gotten to that place of experiencing freedom and seeing 
the Lord, gaining insight and clarity. We turn around and help encourage others on their journey with Jesus because it's symbiotic. They help us also because as long as we are walking on this earth, we're learning, we're changing. The one thing that is constant is change. And we're fit for God's ultimate purpose and plan. The fifth key opens the door to powerful and effective prayer. The double-edged sword of our words directed by the Holy Spirit are refined for God's kingdom. In other words, on this journey with the Lord, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we gain insight in our own walk and our own life. We get revelation. The words of the Bible make sense. So therefore, the words that we receive from the Holy Spirit and words that we have from the Bible that become part of us become our thoughts, become our words, are sharpened, are refined to a double-edged sword that serve a mighty purpose in prayer for God's kingdom and moving forward. We are able to withstand the tides of change because we're standing firm in Jesus Christ. The one thing that is constant is change. Change is coming. It's moving at a quicker and faster pace as things are being uncovered. This is an opportunity, being able to get to that place of telling yourself the truth with Christ, going through the landmines of what you've been through getting healing, finding freedom, getting victory, getting to that place of knowing that Christ is there with you through the power of the Holy Spirit. You move to that place of knowing Him so that you can stand as things progress, as things are uncovered. Think of it as a boot camp. You're in training. These things are happening for a reason. God's opening the doors so that we might see him more clearly. That is revelation. That is the unveiling. But we must come to that place of intimacy with him to be able to withstand, to be able to see. As prayer warriors, walking through in this training process of getting to know the Lord and trusting Him and being open and led by His direction through the power of the Holy Spirit, we become confident in the prayers, these prayers that availeth much. We also, as prayer warriors, become key intercessors for our family, for our friends, for our communities, for the nations and the world, bringing God's kingdom in His purpose and His plan. We align ourselves with other prayer warriors through the bond of the Holy Spirit. In other words, walking through this journey with the Lord through the Holy Spirit, we hear things we get confirmation with other prayer warriors, with other Christians, knowing that God's there. He's leading us. He's guiding us. He's bringing us to revelation. And we come together and unite as his church, his bride, so that we are working through the Holy Spirit. This is extremely important. The sixth key, opening the door to insight to spiritual warfare. Again, insight 
unveiling, revelation on whom we're really fighting and how we do battle. It's something not in our own understanding. But as Christians, as followers of Jesus Christ, receiving the Holy Spirit, being led and directed by God, first we see, we know who we're fighting, and he gives us the tools, the armor, the resources, the unity, everything that we need to walk in faith. For yes, the battle belongs to God. We are called as his children, as his church, to do our part. We, as children of God, in spiritual warfare, unite with heaven's armies to usher in God's kingdom, the kingdom of God. Remember, there's a world belief system and there's the kingdom of God. We realize that the victory was at Calvary's cross. And what we're learning is to walk out that victory. And the very first battle is our training ground and our past. But it takes the Holy Spirit. It takes walking with Him, not a program, not someone directing you but one on one with him nothing else in spiritual warfare opening this door what we're doing is we're taking back legal ground that has been stolen by deception from the enemy remember he lies he's the master of lies And as long as he has us believing these lies, we're under his deception. We're under fear. False evidence appearing real. But as we walk with the Lord, starting with our own personal lives, we begin to see the truth. We begin to have faith and confidence in the truth, which is Jesus Christ. key number seven opens the door to the faith that pleases God we're learning to not just talk the talk but to truly walk the walk that is faith moving in action it's not just speaking it out and telling others it is actually walking it out in your own personal life so that we can walk it out together for God's purpose and plan. We accomplish all that we are called to do in the time allotted. As Paul says, finish the race. There is a reason why you're here in this time that you're here, the time that you're allotted, the opportunities that you're given to get to that place of honesty and truth through Christ. What we do is we obtain a faith that fulfills every aspect of our being, both natural and supernatural. This is the full measure of faith. But it's something that we're given by God, chosen by God, but takes Him and our surrender continually in this journey with Him to receive. It is a gift. Number eight, the key that opens the door to preparation for ourselves and others in all that God is unfolding, no matter what that might be. What we learn is to stand in the peace that surpasses all understanding amidst any storm that unfolds. So let's say we're seeing only the tip of the iceberg in our lives right now, and all of a sudden that iceberg turns upside down. And 
what is revealed to us is things that we can't even comprehend, can't even understand, causing fear and confusion and doubt and overwhelming sense of being alone. If we have gotten to this place of telling ourselves the truth, walking in honesty with God through things in our own life to prepare us, to teach us, to know that He's there, then we'll be able to withstand anything. We'll be able to have that peace that surpasses all understanding amidst any storm that might unfold. We become steadfastly focused on our Savior, Jesus Christ, during all tribulations, both personal and otherwise. But in our personal lives, it's our training ground. It is boot camp. That is why it is extremely important. We will not be swayed or shaken by the growing confusion, by the growing deception and lies, or the fear that might try to penetrate our hearts, or the fear of others during turbulent times. And that is very important, to be that steady rock, standing in the rock. But the only way to do that is get to that place of telling yourself the truth and walking through it. It is what God is giving us right now, our opportunity to know Him, to see Him working in our lives and the lives of others. Very, very, very important. All right, that was the why of telling yourself the truth. Eight keys that opens those doors to communication with God and that relationship with Jesus Christ so that we do walk in victory. Now we're at the how of telling yourself the truth. And there are eight tools that you can use. These are tools from God. No man's program will bring us to that place of healing. It might give us some comfort. It might give us a way to manage. But if you truly want healing, you have to have the Lord. You have to have the way. You have to have the truth. And he gives you the life. Tool number one of the how. The tool of surrender. The very first thing that we do is that we admit our powerlessness. Surrender. Sweet, simple, but powerful surrender. This requires reaching the end of self. We are moving from no longer being self-centered in our own little world, but becoming God-centered centered on him because he knows the big picture he can help us and walk us through train us to be prepared be our refuge our shelter in the times of storm that is why it is so very important and it is possible once you start walking through it in faith we must be willing to surrender control to God That's kind of an uncomfortable thing to do for many of us. And that is a process that takes God's intervention, God's healing. He is the one in control. So when we surrender that control, we know that the battle belongs to him. And our position is one of trusting him and knowing him. We have to be willing to hear what God says, no matter how difficult. That's the part of surrender. It's not just a one-time saying, I surrender. It is a continual, God, I surrender. I don't understand. God, I surrender. But I know, Father, that you've come through before in the past. You've healed me of this. I know that you will in the future. We have to be willing to do what God says, no matter how uncomfortable. That's the tool of surrender. Tool number two, the tool of repentance, seeking change. What that means is we're going to be coming out of our comfort zone, which is uncomfortable, which is unfamiliar, scary. 
but it is is essential that we get to that place some god has laid his hand upon and have gotten to that place of brokenness of humility which this requires true humility that place of saying i can't do it father lord you've got to help me that begins the process of really learning who he is and that we can trust him repentance is a gift it is a major tool to beginning that process of finding freedom we have to be willing to bring what is hidden in the darkness into the light we all have a secret life we all put up facades what he's saying is take those things that are hidden those things that are maybe in our secret life going on in our mind behind closed doors that we're doing for whatever reason it might be he's saying bring it out into the light find the reasons the root cause what caused us to get to this place and get healing bring it into the light and the thing is we can't hide from him he already knows but it is up to us to bring it out think of Adam and Eve in the garden they did something against what God told them to do so therefore they tried to hide from God but they couldn't they couldn't hide from him he knew they couldn't lie to him they couldn't deceive he knew that willingness to confess missing the mark and missing the mark is a phrase that refers to sin that's what sin is missing the mark think of a bow and arrow aimed at the bullseye when we sin we get off that bullseye in other words the direction God has for us for his purpose and plan the best for us not just the best but the very very best so when we confess sin or confess missing the mark it gets us back in line with his purpose and plan next number three the tool of obedience just doing it the term obedience for some might be uncomfortable especially if you've experienced abuse in the past by some authoritative figure be it a parent employer someone that had authority over you and they abused their authority so it can be uncomfortable but again what we're learning to do is to go beyond ourselves, go beyond our flesh that might be screaming no I don't want to do it can't go there we're saying Lord I trust you I'm surrendering I'm going to just do it that is walking in faith trusting him but it takes that relationship remember trusting him to be able to go through this boot camp requires empowerment through the Holy Spirit because on our own we can't do it we don't have the tools others out there may give us bits and pieces of the tool programs may give us again time to to manage but do you want to manage or do you want complete freedom and healing it requires some tough things that we have to do they are simple tools but not easy it requires empowerment of the Holy Spirit to carry us through when we can't do it he can when we lean on him and trust in him so we have to be willing to step out of denial areas of our life again that have been hidden we've got to say okay this happened and some areas might be more uncomfortable than the past uh, an incident that happened that caused your life to go in a direction that has maybe damaged yourself and others uh, might be bitterness hurt 
confusion, anger. But with the Lord, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can get back to that place at any time. Because remember, in this world, we go through a process of time. In God's realm, in the heavenly realm, there is no time. So at any point, with God's help, we can go back to those incidences and get the healing through Christ. And only through him. It is not possible to do it on our own. It is not even possible to do it with another man. Even though he's maybe a professional. The healing comes from God. So we have to be willing to step out of denial. We have to be willing to walk in faith through pain and sorrow. This is the boot camp. No pain, no gain. There's a reason. It is part of God's permissive will. He allows things in our life and it's for a reason so that we get in line with his perfect will. We have to be willing to address the past. It is the way that we learn how to do battle, to fight the good fight of faith in Jesus Christ. So that once we get to that place of dealing with any area of our lives that are not in line with his purpose and plan, no matter what happens in the future, we know, first of all, he'll give us the opportunity to recognize it. He gives us the tools to overcome it and to stand firm when there may be times we have to be patient and wait. He gives us everything we need. Number four, the tool of examination. Taking an honest look. Whew, that's hard, but it's not impossible. But we serve a God of the impossible. This requires empowerment again through the Holy Spirit. We have to be willing to admit character defects. And again, these are areas that have caused us to do and make choices that have affected ourselves and others in a negative way or destructive way. It can include pride. It can include everything from gluttony to vanity to anger to greed, whatever they might be. But we can say, okay, Lord, I have these areas of my life that cause me to make the wrong choices. If there is something that is tied to them from the past, I ask through the power of wisdom and understanding through your Holy Spirit to get to the root cause, to find freedom. And these things, these character defects, these things that hold us bound, shed from us, and we move from character defects to character assets. We have to be willing to submit to change as God directs. We have to willing be willing to just do what he calls us to do. Because in these changes, we're moving from the old man to the new man. The man that understands this world belief system into a new creation designed and created, reborn to the kingdom of God, being able to see the truth of what is going on in our lives and in this world, the bigger picture, divine revelation. We have to be willing to receive deliverance from God. Father, I know that you can deliver me from anything and everything that is not of you. For, Father, I know that you want not just the best for me, but the very best. Number five, the tool of forgiveness. Evaluate relationships. Ooh, that's a hard one. I know. Again, it requires empowerment through the Holy Spirit. Because... There may be relationships that you'd rather not have to deal with. But God wants freedom for you in every area. And it is possible. But it, mo- it means 
dying to the flesh. That means releasing that old man and letting that part that was once you, letting go, getting out of that comfort zone. And through the Holy Spirit, walking through areas of your past, whatever it might be, wow, you get amazing freedom. You get miraculous deliverance and healing. You have to be willing to bring up areas of unforgiveness in this tool of forgiveness. Areas that have maybe been suppressed. That's why getting out of denial is so important. Bringing it to the surface and walking through it, not running away from it, not hiding. Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the Old Testament. They just went into that fire that should have destroyed them. When they walked in to the fire is when the Lord appeared. And they were not singed. They were not burned. And they glorified him. God calls us to do the same thing. And we can through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. We have to be willing to forgive and make amends. This frees us. We are no longer in bondage to unforgiveness. We have to be willing to submit to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. That may require something that on our flesh we don't want to do. God says just do it in faith, no questions, and the Holy Spirit empowers us to be able to do it. And that means also he will empower us in circumstances, in situations, in people, as we walk through this world, he'll put it together. He will engineer and orchestrate our circumstances. Number six, the tool of redemption, cleaning the closet. All of us have secret things in our closet. We have stuff that we've put in there, that we've packed in there. Again, with this tool, it requires the empowerment through the Holy Spirit. You have to be willing to walk through grief of past wrongs done to you and by you. And again, most of us don't want to go there. Some of us may be able to be coaxed to go through part of it. But to be able to go into that fire in faith requires divine empowerment. We have to be willing to be led by the Holy Spirit to address others who have hurt you and those you have hurt. What is so incredible about this is that there's going to be areas that you just don't want to do or don't think you can do. But as you build that relationship with the Lord, you experience him directly in your life, personal, up close. And as you walk through this area, he gives you everything you need to just do it. Then on the other side is complete freedom, no longer tied to anything from the past, any landmines. And we may say, oh, yeah, I've forgiven. Oh, I have gone through that hurt. But when we have a red flag of anger and we're not in perfect love, we take offense, then there's probably something else that we need to address. Again, it takes the Holy Spirit to walk us through any and every area so that we are becoming holy, set apart, made pure by fire. By refinement. Number seven, the tool of true fellowship, a spirit of accountability and unity. And true fellowship means a fellowship of sinners, not a fellowship of saints. That's Dietrich Bonhoeffer. When I first read that, that just hit home. I didn't quite understand what fellowship was, and when I experienced it, I realized, well, that's just a meeting of people sharing how wonderful they are 
playing their facades and making everybody think that they're okay. I don't need anything. But true fellowship is saying, God, I have made error. I have pain. I confess. Very, very important tool. And it is a tool that is designed by God to bring us together. It requires attending a Holy Spirit-led group meeting and continue with those meetings. This is something that is happening all over the world today that is being led by the Holy Spirit. Prayer groups, Bible study groups, house churches overseas in areas that are suppressed, step studies, meetings for healings, coming together, that is essential. But it requires being spirit-led, holy spirit-led. Man has a tendency to take things of God and put it into his own understanding, make a ritual or a program or a structure out of it and say, if you do this program, then you'll be well. Well, if you take the Holy Spirit out, you won't. It's just a program of managing. But we want healing. It has to be led by the Lord. And it's possible. They're out there. They're growing. Because the Holy Spirit is organizing it and managing it. That is his bride, the church, coming together in him. We're hearing the same message from Shenzhen, China, to Lima, Peru, to Europe, to Africa, to Australia, to New Zealand. We are hearing the word of God through the power of the Holy Spirit leading us and guiding us. So the tool of true fellowship is vital through the Holy Spirit and through the Lord. We're getting to know him and he will put people into your lives as you're able to handle it. This will require being willing to open up and get honest with others in a safe Christian environment. And here's the key here. Once you do that, when I first did it, I realized, wow, I did not know how powerful this is. As people begin to start confessing and you're hearing them bring thing, bringing things into the light, you realize, oh my goodness, I thought I was the only one that this was happening to. And then you'll realize there is an enemy. He does have a strategy. You will see other people overcoming and saying, oh, I can do it also. I want to overcome. I want freedom. I want deliverance. And that will give you the accountability to keep moving forward. And it brings unity of God's children as prayer warriors taking back everything that's been stolen. Being able to see the truth. Tool number eight, the tool of servant leadership, helping others. And again, this is just as vital. Remember when Christ left, just before he left this world, just before he went through the crucifixion, he washed the feet of the apostles to show them the power of being a servant, being able to see things from another perspective, his perspective. Because as we, as servant leaders, helping others, we're on a continual process of learning and growing. And as we're helping them, we're still learning. This requires continued spiritual growth and maturity. Because remember, we're never going to be stagnant. We're going to keep moving forward. This time is limited. We have to be willing to turn around and encourage and support under others on their journey of truth and freedom. Because we will never be in this world perfect. We will always be a work in progress. And we will get to that place of being contented and happy and joyful with wherever God puts us. As servant leaders, we're in that process of moving forward, growing. We have to be willing to discover new gifts and talents for God that may have been suppressed in the past 
we all have gifts and talents God's given you something but maybe that gift has been suppressed that talent has been diminished due to something in your past that has caused hurt or disappointment or anger or fear what we're doing is saying okay at this moment in time I can recover through the power of God so that those gifts and those talents might be revealed and that they can be used for a much bigger purpose and plan for God's kingdom and your rewards will be outstanding but it takes and begins with that very first step of surrender the beginning of all knowledge and wisdom is surrender Jesus my Lord and Savior I don't have to know nor do I need to know you will let me know what I need to know when I need to know it my trust is in thee Regina M. Dick in Proverbs 3 5 and 6 it says trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path all right prayer warriors we are going to be starting something january 6 2014 at the beginning of the year it is called armor up am starting january 6 2014 monday through fridays from 7 a.m to 9 a.m central standard time we're going to be live on blog talk radio that's blogtalkradio.com forward slash prayer warriors 365 come join us for a prayer prayer request we're going to be discussing current current events the fears the confusion the things that are going on so that we can address directly these issues and come together in prayer uh, for our families for our lives for our communities and come t- and be at a place of unity through the power of the Holy Spirit it is important that we begin the day by armoring up we will have an armor of God prayer each morning and begin uh, opening the show up to callers so please join us January 6, 2014, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. blogtalkradio.com forward slash prayer warriors 365.